I'm Larry Kudlow. So today's CPI inflation report came in a lot stronger than folks expected. And in fact, there were numerous signs that not only is the inflation not peaking, but actually it may be accelerating. I'll get to that in a moment. But I feel it's my duty to report President Biden's response. Exxon made more money than God this year. That's how he responded. And then he proceeded to bash the oil companies for not drilling. Well, why aren't they drilling? Well, because they make more money and then they buy back their stock, which should be taxed. Now, I'm just paraphrasing his uh, statement, but it's an indecipherable word salad, so I decided to spare you all of it. The gist of it is blame big oil. And then later on, his NEC director, Brian Deese, said, if you really isolate what's going on here, Vladimir Putin decided to take on this irresponsible war. So there you have it, the blame game. Big oil, big pharma, big poultry, big Putin, big, big, big. Blame business. And of course, blame Putin. But of course, what's driving inflation is the lagged impact of massive federal spending and borrowing and money printing. And on top of that, of course, Biden's radical environmental policies, which have made it virtually impossible to get a permit for almost anything. Oil, natural gas, pipelines, highways, roads, bridges, even wind and solar farms will be stopped by the woke policies of the most radical EPA in our history. And then throw in energy and interior departments pursuing the same Green Deal agenda. So all, all companies really don't feel like making long run investments because they read the newspapers and they watch our show. And they know all about the Biden war on fossils. And they figure there may not be a fossil industry after Biden gets done. Frankly, I can't blame them. Can you? Anyway, it turns out that top line CPI over the past three months increased 10.7 percent at an annual rate, which is a couple of points higher than the 12 month change of 8.6 percent. And core prices, that is take out food and energy, well, they picked up 6.3 percent over the past three months. That's higher than the 12 month change of 6 percent. Now, hold on, folks, just hold on. I've got even more numbers coming outside of food and energy, housing and shelter prices, they're picking up steam, 6.7% over the past three months, compared to 5.5% over the past year. That's a bad trend. When the three month is faster than the 12 month, that's a very bad trending indicator. Service prices, not good. Services are up 9% the past three months, only 5.7% over the year. And even if you took out energy, services are still up 8%, compared to only 5.2 for the year. In other words, the three month is much faster than the 12 month. Used car prices are booming, so are new car prices. Healthcare costs are starting to pick up steam and power and utilities are off the charts. Electricity, for example, is up 18.3% for the past three months compared to 12% for the year. Meanwhile, consumer confidence plunged today in the University of Michigan report and inflation expectations inside that tally went up again. And the Atlanta Fed wage tracker, well, that's now up 6.1% in May. It's another troublesome number. And the other day, Janet Yellen, you know her, our friend from the hostage video, she claimed that Europe and all the big countries have the same inflation problems that we do in the U.S. But that's a big falsehood. A couple months ago, the San Francisco Fed showed the core inflation in the U.S. was more than double the OECD countries. And former Clinton and Obama economist Jason Furman, just the other day in a Wall Street Journal op-ed, showed that the U.S. has about three percentage points more cumulative inflation than the euro area since the onset of the pandemic. And in fact, recently, U.S. core inflation in May, as I said, up 6.3 percent. It's only 3.8 percent in the euro area, that's core. And wages in the U.S. are growing about twice as fast as in Europe, and most of this is because our fiscal policies have created a significant excess demand, while Europe's nominal GDP remains several percentage points below trend. You know, Messrs. Furman and Summers and Ratner have all consistently warned about excess spending, but neither Ms. Yellen or Mr. Deese or their boss, Mr. Biden, will admit to it. And never owning it means never understanding it. Now, I remember years ago, the famous movie, Being in Love Means Never Having to Say You're Sorry. But being in high inflation is really a different matter. Another thing Ms. Yellen refuses to learn, when she testified before Congress this past week, 
She continues to push the FY23 Biden budget, which has at least $5 trillion in new spending and another $3.5 trillion in higher taxes, both of which would massively increase inflation. And of course, with today's report, real wages continue, plunging over 3%. Frankly, the economy is barely breaking even right now. It dropped 1.5% in Q1, and the latest GDP tracker from the Atlanta Fed shows a 0.9% gain for Q2. Wow. Most regrettably, the Federal Reserve, which aired mightily along with the Bidens a year and a half ago, they're going to have to adopt a much more aggressive policy to raise their target rate and pull cash out of the economy. To quote my pal Steve Forbes, if they can print money, well, then they can unprint it. There's probably no way out of this inflationary recession scenario. But as an optimist, I do have a different plan. First, make Trump tax cuts permanent and slash personal tax rates, as well as a simplified code. All that would increase the production side of the economy. And second, deregulate energy and industry everywhere. Also boost the supply side of the economy. And third, freeze domestic spending. And fourth, defend the value of King Dollar. Wrap all this up in a balanced budget plan, and this will skyrocket growth and crush inflation. It doesn't have to be any harder than this. The cavalry is coming. I just hope to know what they're doing.